So good morning, everybody, um, and welcome to our next to the next Oasis monthly webinar. Um, this month we're covering the Opera 3 stock processing and bill of materials. Um, thank you for joining me. My name is Bruce Kitt and I'm the Sales and Marketing Director here at Oasis. Um, been here for a long time and have experience in the product for around 17, 18 years. So, um, very quick look at our little uh, agenda. Um, we're going to next look at the modules um, and see what they are about, uh, just a little bit of a presentation. Then I'm going to click over into a video that covers specifically the stock processing with a really good explanation of everything within it, as well as reporting, as well as the bill of materials, which you know now is an extension of the stock um, area in Opera 3. Then I will pop into the software myself and we'll have a quick look at creating a couple of stock items, um, creating a, a couple of bill of materials and running through the process of how, how to process that effectively. Then I'll give, uh, give you a chance to give me any questions um, and anything that come out of that and then we'll finish. So what we're going to be looking at in the software today is the stock and the bill of material areas that sits within our supply chain management. The stock control module can be used on a standalone basis or it can be linked to your nominal ledger, which may be updated, updated via transfer routine or real time update. Your cost of sales, stock movements and stock valuation update control accounts within the nominal um, so you don't have the need to create manual journal entries. Integration with SOP invoicing, sales ledger, purchase order processing, purchase ledger costing and bill of materials modules allow for complete control over your stock movements. The bill of materials um, module is just an extension of our, of our stock uh, ledger where we can set together assemblies that we can manage through a process of um, allocating, issuing and then completing our works order, giving us work in process figures in, in, in the process uh, as well as costing our items. Some of the stock features we can expect in the stock processing is things like uh, landed costs, um, which are those costs, additional costs other than the unit price cost that are incurred to get goods um, from purchasing uh, from our supplier to our premises, particularly for goods that are imported. The total cost of a landed shipment may include things like the purchase price, freight costs, insurance and any other costs. And in some instances, it may also include the customs duties and other taxes that are levied on a shipment. Traceability. So traceability is an optional facility that provides the controls and functions you need to record and process traceable stock. When we refer to traceable stock, we mean stock items that are identified as unique by means of a serial number or belonging to a batch of two or more similar items by means of a batch number. Open period accounting. Um, is an optional feature that allows you to control whether your nominal ledger accounting periods are open or closed for new postings. And then of course the stock take module that allows us to take a snapshot of our stock, do a stock take, enter the figures and the system will adjust accordingly to our stock take and to whatever we've set those stock take uh, profiles to be. So the bill of materials, well, that's an integrated part of our stock control system and it cannot be purchased separately. So bill of material or BOM, as we call, call it, allows assembly structures to be defined from stock component parts and helps to maintain the stock levels of components, sub assemblies and the finished assembly item as the assembly is put on a works order. It can be allocated, issued and finally received back into stock as a completed item. So the idea of a bill of material is there is those items that we make or build ourselves, even if we only put a couple of 
let's say, um, bulbs uh, for a vehicle together in a box, making up a pack of bulbs. That could be a bill of material because we take the box, we take the separate um, bulbs and we add them together into a finished product and that's what the bill of materials in very simple terms allows us to do so some of the key functions of bill of materials module is firstly kitting so that's, those assemblies can be built and received into stock in one process kitting means the works order doesn't go through the process of allocating issue and be completed when we sell the item or when we create the uh, the uh, works order for a kitted item it automatically takes the components from stock and adds the finished item into stock ready to be sold it gives us assembly, so the ability to build up our item through a different levels of assemblies. It creates works orders for us to, to control the flow of making the items in our factory. Multi-level issues, sales order processing kitting, that means I can sell my item directly from my uh, sales order processing area and create a works order on the back of that to create the item for me ready to be sold. I can optionally allocate the items, amend works orders, completion of work or orders. I can delete works orders. So issue return works orders, phantom sub assembly. So phantom sub assembly is assembly that sits within an, uh, a structure, but a phantom assembly is an item that is never a finished good in my in my warehouse. So it might be an item underneath a bill of material that I have to put together. Uh, let's say a box of screws, but I never sell a box of screws. So that's just a fantasy, uh, a phantom sub assembly because I still put it together for the overall structure I'm dealing with. I can automatically create work orders on the back of sales orders, um, automatically allocate and issue and complete. And the we can do all the work bill of materials and works orders for traceable and uh, both component and finished goods. We can view our structure, we can update our cost prices, we can have labor stock items. So if I've got se several phases in my bill of material, each phase might have a different time element according to building it. I could associate labor items in my in my structure to cost correctly the item. I can have description only items. There can be memos, so real time linking to my costing. So if I of jobs, I can link this directly to my costing. A normal stock cost, material cost price and labor cost price are held on each assembly stock item, which we'll see when we look at it. The assembly structure has got a full reporting area where it's used on, what the cost report is, what outstanding and completed works orders are. We've got a work in progress report. We've got a movements report and we've got conversion of senior and single user bomb structures to Opera. And there's nine levels that can be implemented within these works orders. I just want to mention the work in progress. Those would be the items that we've allocated and issued to a works order. That would be represented by the work in progress figures within our stock processing items. And again, we'll see that later when we look at it. So that's just a really quick overview of the stock processing and the bill of material modules. Next, I'm going to pop over into showing a part of a video. This specifically covers the stock processing and then it goes into the bill of materials processing. It's not very long, but it covers and explains very well all the areas, how you use them and what they are for. And once we've got this knowledge, I will pop over and we'll look a little bit at the demo. So without further ado, I'm going to start the video and we can have a look at it. Now remember, you don't have to use stock control. You can simply use the product file. However, let's have a look at some of the things that the stock control allows us to do. As part of the stock control, it allows us to go through and set up multiple warehouses. I can set up any number of warehouses that I want within the system. And when I define a warehouse, I can define whether it's a quarantine warehouse, in which case I might want to restrict the movements to that warehouse. Maybe I have receipts. I'm not allowing issues. I'm just allowing a transfer from that warehouse to another warehouse that will allow issues out of stock. It also allows you to go through and define the address of that, because if you're raising purchase orders, you might want 
want them to be delivered to different warehouses. So it allows you to go through and set up those warehouses. It also allows you to go through and set up stock profiles. In this example here, you can see that I've got a stock profile which is described as box. I've set them up as a pack of 1,000. I've also identified that I'm allowed to split that pack. However, if I split that pack, there might be a surcharge that I want to put onto the sales invoice for opening that pack for that particular customer. Okay, also against these stock profiles, the system allows us to go through and say whether an item is serial number traceable. What that basically means is we can assign a serial number and when we move it out of stock, we can select those serial numbers to be shipped through to the customer. We also have batch traceability. This is particularly useful in industries such as pharmaceuticals, where you get a batch of items that come into stock under a particular lot number, and therefore you can record that lot number against it. You can therefore issue them out through to the customer against that lot number. If you need to get into a recall situation, then the system has batch traceability that allows you to go through and identify where those items were shipped to. If we look at the next record, we can see that this one has been set up as decimal and I've set it up to two decimal. It allows me to go through and define the number of decimals that I want for the transactions for this particular stock item. Notice also, I've set this item here to be costed as the selling price is the cost price plus a 40% marker. So again, you've got this sort of flexibility that's available to you. There are different costing methods as well. You can define stock items as being FIFO. That's first in, first out. Stock issues are made from the oldest receipts first, and therefore stock can be valued at its FIFO basis. You can also set up as average cost. In-stock quantities are valued at the average of the cost of the items that are currently in stock. If you don't select the average cost, then it can go through and use it as standard cost as defined on the stock record itself. And therefore, when you do the stock valuations, it will look at these different costing methods. When you run the stock value report, the stock valuation report allows you to go through and actually specify you want it to be valued at the last buy price. So there's a lot of flexibility in there in the way that you're setting up this costing record. OK, let's go and have a look at a stock record. I'm going to stop processing looking at the stock record, and we have various things such as the, the description of the item, the stock code, we can have an extended description that's on there, and this can therefore be printed on the invoices and on the purchase orders. We have a sales code that allows us to go through and define which nominal account it will be posted to. We have a supply code, so when we're buying the items in, which nominal account do we want that to be posted to. And we also have the standard selling price, the standard cost price, the last buy cost. It is also showing us here things like the quantity in stock, the quantity allocated and therefore the free stock, the quantity that's currently in work in progress, uh, the projected stock levels and quantities that are on purchase order and quantities that are on sales orders. If I take the spy glass here off the in stock quantity, double click that, I can see that it breaks it down to the various warehouses. So I can see that in the main warehouse, I have 391 in stock, 10 allocated and therefore 381 available. And it also shows me all of the other warehouses here. I can also drill down into those. If I want to look at purchase transactions, then it will show me all the purchase orders that are on that particular warehouse. Or if I want to go through and look at the sales orders, then I can see the sales orders that are being raised against that particular warehouse as well. So it allows you to go through and analyze this data in this way. If we look at the action button and choose options, for instance, is this product superseded by another product? If so, what is that product that supersedes it? And on what date does that supersession come into place? If I'm raising a sales order and there's none in stock, are there alternatives available? Uh, in which case, it will allow me to do that sort of upsell. If I go to the suppliers, it allows me to set up any number of suppliers that are supplying me this particular stock record. A supplier might be supplying me at a different cost price. It might have a different lead time. Uh, it might have a different supplier reference. I simply go through and set up each of my suppliers for those particular items. It also has the concept of landing costs. This becomes particularly important if you're buying materials from abroad because it's not just the cost price of the item you're buying, there's going to be other costs associated with shipping it from abroad through to your warehouse. So in this example, for instance, you can see that we have a air transport cost and this is set up as a percentage. This is set up as 2% of the line value cost. We also have an insurance charge that's being levied and this is set up as a £2.50 per item that's being delivered to us. 
We also have an aggregated type costing system. This is particularly useful for those where you have other items such as anti-dumping duty. And the anti-dumping duty may not just be applied to the cost price of the material. In my example here, the anti-dumping duty is also related to the air transport as well. And it's taking those both into account and it's charged at 20% of that particular item. What's basically happening here is that it's looking at all these values, it's calculating those values to give you the landed cost for this particular item. So the standard cost for buying it from my supplier is £125, but there's also £30.50 of landed costs. When I do stock valuations and what have you, the system will actually look at this and report on this. We also have the ability to run global price uplifts. So if prices are changing, then it will allow me to go through and perform a global price change. I can choose the stock records that it's from or the stock categories that it's from. Is it for a product that's to be uplifted in the stock file? Is it related to a price list? Is it related to a warehouse? Is it related to supplier prices? So I can be selective with which area I want to upgrade this and I can define whether it's by a percentage or whether it's by a value. Okay, within the stock system itself, if you're not using purchase order processing, then we can simply go through and we can post receipts into stock. We also have the option to go through and run a goods received note system. This allows us to do movements into stock in bulk. If I go through and I create a new goods received note, it allows me to go through and define uh, the delivery reference. I don't know, delivery reference. What's the date of this? It then allows me to go through and put the details on. So is this goods received note related to purchase order receipts? or is it goods received related to just direct movements into stock? So I can be selected. If I'm using the purchase order system, I can do it in bulk from the purchase order system. If however, I'm not, I can simply say, no, it's nothing to do with the purchase order system. I'm just entering a whole range of items into stock. So this can be a rapid way of doing stock movements as opposed to doing them individually from the stock record or from the purchase order. Okay, so we've looked at stock receipts there. We've looked at stock receipts coming from purchase order processing. We've just looked at stock receipts coming from on the goods received note and we've seen how we can do direct receipts into stock using the stock system. However, there is a fourth method that is using the bill of materials. The bill of materials uh, system allows you to go through and define items that are manufactured from their components, in which case we can therefore go through and we can raise a works order that's going to initiate the manufacture. We can allocate the component stock to that works order we can issue that component stock so that it takes it out of stock. And then when the works order is complete, we can complete the works order and it will move into stock the finished goods. We also have this kitting option. And if this is turned on, what this basically means is when the works order is created, the assembly is immediately moved into stock and the components are immediately moved out of stock. This is a useful way to simply control the stock levels without having to go through the full manufacturing process. Let's have a look at a particular bill of materials. I'm looking at this at a roadside assist pack. We're going to go through and let's have a look at the components. And here's the bill of materials for this particular item. We can see that it's got a maintenance kit. And if I expand that, that is a maintenance kit, which is an assembly. And it's made of all these particular components that go into that particular assembly. We can also see that we have a box of spare bulbs. And we can see all of the spare bulbs that go into that box of spare bulbs. So it allows you to go through and set up the main assembly, the sub-assemblies, and the components linked into those sub-assemblies. It also allows you to go through and define uh, items of labour which will be built into the costing for this particular item. Okay, let's go through and let's manufacture this. I'm going to set this as a kitting item and save that away. I'm now simply going to go through and I'm going to generate a works order. I'm going to create a new works order. I'm going to say that this works order is for Works order reference of 1,000. The quantity is to be 10. And I'm going to commit this works order. It shows me all of the components. And yes, I'm happy with each of those quantities on there. So I'm just going to simply select that. And it's going to generate the works order. And there we go. There's the works order for this particular item. What it's shown me here is it's shown me all the components that are required. It's shown me the material cost, the labour cost, and it's given me the overall cost for this particular works order. Because I've set that works order as kitting, what it has now done is it's immediately moved those items into stock. If I go and view that, 
What I can see now is for our main warehouse, I can see the stock is 24, and I can see there's a receipt into stock at today's date for that works order, and the quantity is at 10, and that's the price for those items. Okay, let's go through and have a look at some of the reports. In stock system, we have something called view, and in fact, this view option is available throughout uh, Opera 3. It allows the user to go through and set up different views of the data, and you can set up any number of these views. In this example, I've got a couple that are set up for the stock system. I'm going to look at stock movements for today. So I'm going to select today only. I'm going to change the criteria because I want to see not only issues, but I also want to see receipts. But on the stock view, I can be selected. Do I want it to be by warehouse, by stock record, by profile, uh, by supply code? So I can be very selective in the data that's going to be displayed. In my case, I'm going to select them all and I'm going to refresh this view. It's now showing in this example issues that have been made today and receipts that have come into stock today. If I look at the issues, I can see that we've got an issue of the car mat. Yes, we did deliver that car mat. If I drill into this, I can see that it was an issue. It was against that delivery note and it was to that account and that was the date that it was delivered. So I can see that I've issued that out of stock. And similarly, if I go to the radio, I can see that radio was issued out to that account on that delivery note to that particular customer. However, we can also see that we've got issues of things like the foot pump and the car jack. Remember, these were issues that were made from that bill of material. So these were the components that were issued out of stock. Yes, they were issued out of stock. This was the works order that they were issued to, and that was the quantity that was issued to that works order. So it allows me to drill down into the issues in this example for today. The reverse side, of course, is I can see the receipts into stock. And yes, we did get that radio from that supplier. So I can look at this and I can see, yes, it was a receipt. It's to that supplier's account, and it was on that delivery note from that supplier on that date. We also have another receipt into stock, which was that roadside assist pack that came from the works order. If I drill in down into this, I can see that it was a receipt, it was against that works order, and that was the date, and that was the quantity that came into stock. So it allows us to go through and interrogate stock in all sorts of different ways. Okay, let's just have a look at a couple of the reports. Let's go through into the stock report. Let's look at the stock valuation report, for instance. I can be selective on the stock record, but I'm going to select all of them. And I'm going to run this report straight through the screen. And here we go. Here's the stock valuation report. What it shows me here, for instance, for my small car mat, it shows me what's the quantity in stock, what's the cost price, including the landing cost, what's the selling price, and therefore what's the total cost of in stock, included landing cost, selling price, potential profit, and therefore the margin that I'm going to make. And therefore this goes through for all of the stock records that are in that selected range. Let's run that stock valuation report again, but this time I'm not going to print it to screen. I'm going to take this option to send it through to Excel. In other words, many of the reports within Opera 3 can be directly sent through to Excel. So let's publish this report, but this time it's going to create an Excel spreadsheet which shows me all of that information. And here we go, here's the spreadsheet, and once it's in the spreadsheet, I can therefore go through and I can do whatever calculations, whatever manipulation of this data I wish to. Now, we've only got a limited amount of time to go through and show you this, but uh, there are other things that we have in here. We have, as part of the stock system, for instance, we have the return to vendor, so if you've got goods that are being sent back to your suppliers, then there's a system that proves that. We also have stock take utilities as well, so if you want to count the stock and you want to make sure the stock levels are accurate, then this will allow you to count the stock and update the stock levels based upon those stock take figures. Now, remember, so there, there we go. Um, that was the very short video where he kind of covered most areas in, 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 in some of the processing in those two modules. So I think what we'll do now is we'll pop on over into the software, um, create a couple of items and look at creating a new item. I'm going to create a new assembly. We'll do the kitting as he did and we'll, I'll do a work full works order demo. Sorry about the spelling mistake on there, but we'll do a full works order demo. So let me just pop on over into the software. So there you go. So what I'm going to do is firstly into our stock area. I'm going to start by uh, opening the processing 
and I'm going to start by creating another item. Let's create component 005 in the process. So in everything in Opera, to create anything new, you use the new icon here or control N. I'm going to use the icon. First thing it wants me to do is create a reference that I want this to be. I'm going to go with component 005. I can create it without a model. It means everything here will be blank for me and therefore um, I need to refill it in. But I could also create it using um, an existing item. So I can say to it, I'm going to use component 004 to create component 005 with. And what will happen is it will just copy the whole stock item for me to my new uh, item and then I can just come in here. I can come and overwrite the information of the new stock item that I've got in here and change anything here that I want the want to change. I'll leave that out like that. So um, just to talk through some of these options, um, the sales code is when I sell this item, component five, which of my nominal uh, codes are going to be affected by that sale. When I buy the item for my purchases, which of my supply or cost of sale codes are going to be affected by the purchase? The category here is categories I apply to my stock items. These are set by yourself. As you can see in this system, we've got things like accessories, consumables, contracted services, lease contracts, maintenance, and vehicles. I'm going to leave it on the vehicles. And then the profile, the profile file defines several things, including the how you stock the item. So in this case, it's FIFO, first in, first out. But pro, the profile can be contracts. It could be a labor item. It could be factored. So you could have things in packs like you do there. Um, it, it could just be a service. This is also where you profile traceable, um, traceable items, etc. So this gives you a whole host of options of how to set up the item, and that would control how the item is then dealt with within the stock area. So I've got a single item here set up as a component. I've decided its selling price is going to be 50, and the cost price I haven't put in because when I start buying and selling, it would put the cost price in for me. I'm going to save the item and what comes up first is the options. I have to decide here if I want to apply weight, volume and gross weight to the item. If I do, I can put that in there. Um, also, what the status is here of the stock item. Am I going to be able to buy or sell this to my customers? directly if it's not just a component so i could say yes so it's going to be allowed on sales orders and obviously i'm going to have to purchase this item so i'm going to allow it on a purchase order some of the other things here we can set if needed like steve said the superseded by and the alternative products can be set here if needed Lastly, I come up with a discount and sale area. If I want to apply a discount group to the item, I can do so here. If I want to apply these different discounts, I can tick on and apply it here. Or if I have sale prices and next prices, I can apply it for the dates that would come into effect on this screen. If I want to, I can add the supplier details, and that could be quite useful, especially if you want to use rheumatic reordering. I'm just going to say yes to that. The supplier screen comes up. If I know what the item reference for my supplier is going to be, I can say that might be the reference there. Um, that's component five. The the, the supplier, I can pick up from any of the suppliers in my system who that is going to be. The EOQ is the economic order quantity. It just means that when I buy component 005 from Carter's, what is the best quantity for me to get the best price of? So the economic order quantity might be something like 100 or 50 or something like that. And if I get it at 50, the cost per item is... £11.99. I can rate my vendor 1 to 9 and I can put a lead time in for the item. I can create more than one supplier for the item and pick up again another of my supp suppliers in here. I can have a different currency code in there. They might have a different economic order quantity. Their cost might be 
a little bit more expensive. Their vendor rating is going to be two, not one, because I prefer to use the other one, but their lead time is still one day. So I can create some suppliers against the stock item I've just created. What happens next? It pops out if I use warehousing. It pops up and it asks me for this warehouse, main warehouse or different warehouses I can set. But if I use stock take, what is the profile? Um, do I count these items? Don't I? Um, do I allow variances or not? These profiles are set by yourself if you use stock take. I'm just going to say it must be exact at this point in time. I'm going to put my selling price in here as 50 quid, the same as it was. I don't have an average cost, an average lost uh, landed cost price yet. Um, I'm going to say the minimum quantity of the item I want in stock, let's say is 10. The reorder level is when it gets down to um, five, I'm going to reorder and the reorder quantity is going to be 100. It's well above the economic order quantities that we need. If I have a bin where this item is going to go, I can put it in there. If I want to add a delivery charge here, I can do so. And if I want to put a renewal date for these figures in, I can do so. And again, I can here add my supplier to the to the uh, supplier list for the um, warehouse that I'm dealing with. And I can put both suppliers in there. I'm just going to put that one in there for now. And then because I use landed costs, the next thing that pops up on my list is, do I want to apply landed costs? Apply yes or no. I don't have to apply landed cost. There's a component freight postage here, which is 2.5% of the overall value. Um, I can apply this cost type. I can also add additional cost types in here by selecting any of the areas in here. I can have insurance value, which is always a fixed value in this instance, and can it supply it to the stock items. And once I've gone through all those things, I've actually set my stock item up. I've got everything set in it. Uh, I've got my stock pricing set. I haven't bought the item yet. I haven't sold the item yet, but I've got the component in there. Now, to set up a bill of material, and if I just open the bill of materials on this side, and we have a look at the list, you will only notice those items from the stock that actually is an assembly and a bill of material. So BOM001, I can see in my stock reference, BOM001 as an item. They are exactly the same item, but in bill of materials, we can actually now go and look at what makes up, which components makes up that stock item in bill of materials. At the same time, I'm very quickly going to create a new stock item for bill of materials and then show you that you it doesn't just is represented in bill of materials. You have to go and create it there. So I've got all my bill of materials there. Let's come in here. Let's create a brand new one based on BOM003. I'm going to create a new item. I'm going to call it BOM004. I'm going to create it with that item. I'm going to say OK to that. I uh, don't clear the extended description. There's a description here. I just said not to clear it. Um, I'm going to go here with BOM004, service pack, executive. Notice I put some information in here because I can actually use this in searching for stock items later on. I'm going to change that to four. I'm going to keep the sales and supply codes the same, single items the same. And because this is an executive, I've decided this is going to be sold at 249.99. I'm going to save that. All the same things happen now. I'm going to allow sales orders on this because I want to sell the item. But I'm not going to allow a purchase order because I can't buy this pack. I have to make the pack through my bill of material. In the same way here, um, a discount group has been applied to that um, for, for the item. I'm going to leave that there and line discounts has been applied because I've said that before. And at this point, I'm not going to add a supplier detail just to show you. And I'm not going to set quantities against my um, main, main warehouse at this point because I just want to get this item created and I'm not going to apply any landed costs.
Now I've got my bill of material item four here created. It shows me here there's an extended description. There's nothing else. If I look at one of my other bill of materials, I can actually see here at the bottom, it indicates to me that's an assembly. So how do I make this item an assembly? So I come into my bill of materials, can refresh that just to show you it's not brought them a bill of material for through. I can now come in here, I can create a new bill of material. I can pick up my stock items. That's not assemblies at the moment, only the stock items I have. I'm going to pick up bill of material for. If I create it with an existing assembly. And I for example, uh, for example, um, select service pack three. Say OK to that. And save my bill of material. As soon as I save my bill of material, it pops up with the assembly definition as created for the item I copied it from. From here now, of course, I can change this. I can add items. I can take some of these off. I can add um, any any structure in there, which is what we're going to do now, because I said this is an additional executive pack. So item one, I'm definitely going to still have two items in there. Item two, there's five of the pack of screws in there. There's an executive cleaning pack box that I've created for this. The labor in putting this all together takes five minutes. So I've put five minutes there because labor works out of 60 minutes. And then I've also put some um, postage, uh, a, a fixed postage charge on here that comes from one of my items. But this is an executive pack. So in actual fact, I want to add some items on here. So how do I do that? Create new item here from my items i can find let's put component five in we created a little bit earlier on i can describe what it is i can reference the component here i can say which warehouse it comes from and i can say what quantity of that is needed when i put this pack together i want two of them in that pack and so you can see I can add that up, but I can also now come in here and say, actually, I want that to be up F10. I want to move that up. I want to sit there. And I think we might need a little bit more labor on here because we've got some additional work to do. So let's add a labor item. So you can see I've got a labor item set up for assembly labor, assembly costs for boxing up and for phase one. Let's just add some phase one on here. It's definitely not going to take an hour, but it might take 10 minutes. On escape that I'm going to say OK to that and I'm going to save that. And immediately I now have within my bill of materials, I've got my item set up. And I can now do with this item what I want. If I sell this item through my sales order processing, for example, I can sell the item and immediately select to create a works order on the back of that to create the works order. But I can also come in here and say, I don't have anything of this in stock. I need to make some of them. So go to my works order. Create a new one. Just select it to screen. I can give my works order. A reference. I can say how many of the of the items I want to make. I can say I want to make 10 of them. So OK to that. It then pops up and it shows me my structure. For 10 items and which how much of each item would be required. For this to take place. I'm going to say OK to that. I'm happy with that. And the works order has been created. It shows me here the material, the labor cost and what the overall cost of this would be. Now, because this isn't a kitted item, I can't take my um, item through a process of issue, return, complete, etc. As you can see from the items here, I've got 10 in my works order currently. I've projected to have 10 items in stock when the works order is completed. If I allocate the items, 
it will come up here with what's not been allocated. I can say yes to that. I can allocate however many I want. If I can only make five, I can do that. It will keep the other five outstanding. But I can say okay to that. And now I've allocated my stock to the works order. But for the stock to show in my um, work in progress, I need to issue the items. And again, it will only show you show me the 10 items I haven't issued yet. And I'll say OK to that. Now the items are issued. Um, I can complete the works order and do the rest of my things and go through the factory. And when I complete the works order, I can accept that I've made 10 or I can accept that I made nine. I had to discard one, for example. I can do that. But I'm just going to say that I've made the 10. I've received them back in. And immediately you can see those items aren't ready for me to sell. Now, when I sell the item, let me just open a sales order processing and do a new invoice, uh, a new order. Bill of material four, which I've just created. It tells me I've got 10 in stock. I can tell sell 10 now and I would have enough, but I could say the customer wanted 15 or let's say the customer wanted 20 of these. I don't have enough stock, but that's all right. I can part supply 10 at this point in time, or I can just proceed with that. I'm going to go through and what I want to mention here really is this works order tick box. If my sales order process is assessing is linked to my bill of materials, I can tick this on here. And it asks me, do I want to raise the works order now? If I say yes to that, it will go away and it will raise a works order for me for the items that I need. I'm just going to post my order. And just show on the screen what's happened. So it's gone away. It's created a works order for me for 20 items. I can now obviously take my order and progress it through. But what I want to do is come back to my bill of materials and looks at the look at the works orders and now you can see here I have a works order created for 20 items that comes off the back of my um, sales order processing I just did. I can edit the works order. I can come in here and say actually I do have 10 in stock. I don't need everything in there and say OK to that. It will set my works order to 10, 10, 10 and there you go. I can reprint the works order just to show that it's changed the works order to the items I now require. And of course, I can now go through and create this works order, um, allocate issue and whatever I need to do on the works order. And as you can see on the actual bill of materials, as well as on the actual stock item, the, the figures are represented as exactly what has happened so far. The next thing I quickly want to cover is the kitting option. The kitting is the same idea, but it totally eliminates the whole need to allocate to issue and complete a works order. If I have a kitted item like here, when I create a works order for it and I do a new works order, I'm just going to do it for one item. It shows me what it's going to do. I'm going to say OK to that. Accept all of that. Shows me my works order. Come out of here and now you would see my in stock figure has, uh, has gone from 25 to 26 immediately because I had the item kitted. Exactly the same thing happens when I sell it. So if I go into my sales order processing, I create a new order for bill of material one 
although I have items in stock, I'm going to say one to that and create a works order. It will automatically raise the works order for me. Put the item in stock and by the time I progress this order to an invoice, that item would be in my stock to sell effectively. It's already created that item now and as you can see, it's got uh, the amount in, 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 in stock that you would expect. There you go, 27. I can now obviously sell this item on. So further to this, some of the functionalities I just want to mention in here is the automatic works order is works order that's created on the back of sales order processing. So um, if I sell bill of material items and I haven't ticked on the automatic works order, this is where I would come in. It will show me a list of those items and I get to progress them to works orders. The works order progression, this allows me in bulk or in batch to progress works orders. So here I can say I want to see everything that needs to be allocated. I can find 10 there. I can see everything that needs to be issued. I'll find everything there if there is an allocation. I can see everything I can complete here if there is anything I can complete. I can also deallocate, which means that if I if I wanted to deallocate something I've allocated, I can do so there. So if I go to my allocation, I can select that there, run through the process and say OK to that. And I can come back in here, I can take that on, I can now come and issue in bulk any of the items because it just moves on to my list as to whatever the status of it is. And of course, lastly, I can come in here and I can run the complete and it will again pick up anything that I've completed here and discarded it. Within this one screen. And here inquiry form just allows me to inquire about works orders, gives me information about them. I can look at them from here. Um, I can look at the history of them, dates, time, which user used it, when it was last used, etc, etc, within this screen. Within our utilities, the assembly cost update, I just want to mention you can do a run an update here, so it will update the assembly cost based on the items that's been added here and it will give you an audit trail of whatever it's done. And lastly, in the reports area, the assembly work in progress and the component working progress are those reports that tell you which items are currently within that phase of work in progress um, in, being, in, in being created for the bill of materials. So you can see from an assembly point of view what's work in progress and also individual components that's work in progress. So that kind of covers the demo part I wanted to do for the Opera 3 stock and bill of materials. Um, I think I kind of covered everything that, that, that I could in there. Um, so uh, if anybody has any questions, now would be a good time to throw them at me. OK, let me see if I can unmute you guys. <laughs> Settings, meeting options. Hello, Mike for attendees. Sorry, there you go. I've unmuted you. You should be able to. Talk We're alive. To there there we you go. go. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't even realize it did that. I thought you could unmute. That's OK, that's OK. Um, thanks for that. I don't have personally have any questions, but um, okay. Keith and or Kinga might. I don't know. Um, no hi, um, I'm Kinga. Hello, um, Kinga. I did have a question. I mean, it doesn't really have to do with <laughs> the things that we were talking about today, That's but right. um, linking. I'm trying to link uh, Opera and our website, so with. Um, uh, so that the website shows available stock and price. Yep. Uh, that's in Opera. 
um, and I've been having issues with a couple of products and I'm not really sure what to do. So we usually. That's fine. Is it is it one of the web links that we have written for for this purpose? Because we have written most of the links that that manages the stuff between either. the website. I'm, or is I'm this sure another is. link? Yeah. No, I think so. Um, I I think usually we use uh, search reference one. Um, if okay. for whatever reason it, it can't find uh, the stock in Opera, then we put a reference in there. But it doesn't seem to be working. So I was just wondering if there's anything that I can look at to see what the issue could be or I'm sure there is but that's not something I can advise you okay. with I will okay. I, you'll have to get um onto our support team okay. because the person who'd written the links is available yeah. there and he'll be able to advise if there's a problem or look at the code or 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 they'll be able to look is this for all the stock items or just some no it, it was just a couple of stock items that, just a couple uh, oh, okay so there's something specific with those couple of items yeah. that it's not happy with i understand okay. Okay. i'm afraid i can't help you with That's that kinga right. but i will pass that on to the team so they are aware of, okay. of that um i'm not sure if they've picked up any of the messages that we get in the background from from the web links uh, i'm not sure if that would have been on those messages so i'm not sure whether they would have seen that so i'll have to ask them that's all right but i, I can contact then um okay. the support team so thank you no problem <laughs> no problem i'll advise them that you'll be contacting them <laughs> thank you very much no problem any other questions anybody else i think or... keith has but you're on mute keith you just have to click on the button to unmute yourself oh, oh yeah i don't have any questions <laughs> Hi, keith you don't have any questions. No, no, no it was all clear. Cheers. No problem. I'll send out a recording anyway afterwards. And if you Thanks. have any other questions, anything that pops up that you thought, oh shit, I should have asked that, <laughs> then mm. please please send send me an email. It's it's I'm always available. We can always try and help. So um yeah, if oh, you guys Bruce, yes. I just thought of one. When you were adding in the supplier details, you yeah. um mentioned about the vendor rating one to nine. Is that yes. is that standard i don't think we go up that high um oh. does it let you put any number in there uh yes we we only go through one to three or four is it i think no i think it's one to either nine or eight. Oh, is it okay. i think it's, I just, it's, I it's think any it's any it's a single it's any single digit number one to nine as far oh, as i'm fine, aware fine, fine. yeah right okay yeah okay. Uh, because because when you when you add five six or seven different suppliers for the same item mm. you might want to rate them all differently because how how you buy from them would be then looked at by the system when it suggests it would look at what the vendor rating is as well as what the lead time from that vendor is to decide who is the best vendor to use for right. you okay. effectively and then suggest that and then yeah. put the others underneath that in in the in the in the a different order i suppose yeah sure. so yeah, I have a look at that. I mean, but yeah, as far as I'm aware, it's vendor one to nine. I'm not sure anybody really uses that much of them. No, sure. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yep. Any other questions, guys? No, nope, I think me. that's it. No. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. No, so I run you. these. I run these every month. Next month, I have a fixed assets webinar um, to look at the fixed assets module in Opera 3. Not sure that would be of interest to anybody here, but I will send invitations out to that again the last Thursday of the month. Next month, I'll be looking at that. So oh, I'm, I'm talking nonsense. I said fixed assets, but I'm going to do importing next month. <laughs> <laughs> so, there, we go. Oh, there you go. So sorry. Yeah. Um, have a lovely, uh, lovely day for the rest of it. And thank you so much for joining me this morning. I'll thank speak you. to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.